So what I was trying to tell you is, this uh, small image that I am trying to show it to you on the PowerPoint, what do you understand from this particular image? Milestones, beautiful. Huh? Growth, good. Huh? Development, very good. Learning, yes. All keywords. Huh? Pediatric, okay. Good. Possible. I didn't get uh, something else. I got pediatric. Okay, milestone, a journey. A process, okay, a development, good, very good. So why did I get this image is learning material medica, you know, or studying material medica from first year to the final year. I know there are five years, I didn't want to turn one person, so anyway, I wanted to understand that the learning of material in different years, they are different. I hope all of you agree. And then, material medical learning in first year and you know, now that you are in final year, that is where I am trying to come. Every remedy that you study in first year, second year, third year and final year will vary. At least I feel it will vary and it should vary. Your understanding, your knowledge, everything also will increase and you will have a better understanding of a remedy. Okay. I will just give you a small example. So what I was trying to tell you is, you see an evolution here. So as we evolve as a homeopathic student, learning material medica also evolves. Or learning material medica should vary. Should vary. Now I just want to have a quick inputs. When I say learning material medica in final year should vary, so what is that? Okay, no, no, no problem, no problem, no problem. Let's see what best we can do. I mean, you'll be missing the PPT, but fine. So what best you need to understand here is, it'll come, power will come, don't worry. So what best you need to understand here is, as a final year student, and I've, I've told you many times, for a teacher, this is a very scary situation. I took almost four hours to prepare this PPT. Okay, and then power goes. Luckily, we have chop, chop piece and uh, board. Okay, but anyway, we'll, we'll try to manage and we'll try to give you the best possible. So what I was trying to tell you is, understanding or learning material medica in final year will have some variation. Or it should have some variation. Now, how many of you agree it should have a variation? All of you. Okay, chalo. So if you have done, Okay, now what is that variation that we see when we understand or when we study a remedy for a final year? You know. Okay, one second. What is it that the student and the teacher should be focused upon when a remedy is taught in a final year? Okay, very good. One of your friends says, sir, my son, for the topic, there was a voice behind me. Huh? Okay, very good. One at a time, comparison. Pathogenesis. Huh? Pathogenesis. Okay, you'll be focusing on pathogenesis, which I am sure you have been doing from first step. Clinical. Practical. Okay, you'll be looking at the practical aspect. Yes, good. Integration with knowledge of medicine. Okay, very good. Beautiful word. Oh, they love space. A lot of answers coming up. Integration. It's a beautiful word. We look at it. Okay, anything else? Relationship. Okay, you also look at the relationship. Prescription. Yes? Okay. Okay, somebody used the word the practical, clinical, prescription. Good, anything else? Now, what is it that you'll be looking at? You know, or what is your expectation from me as a final year teacher? What exactly you want in the remedy is what I was trying to understand. So the remedy, we'll be looking at uh, the myasam, we'll be comparing, we'll be focusing on the pathogenesis and of course uh, uh, the clinical, the practical part, which, how do you make this class practical, how do you make this class clinical? Bringing cases, very good, beautiful. So you bring in cases. Hmm? Good, so we'll see. Okay, bringing in cases and making it practical. Anything else? Anything else? Something? Interaction. Huh? Interaction. Okay, interaction. Okay. Fine. Interaction. Okay, good. Interaction. What else? 
anything else? Bury another room, something you would like to add? So one thing I also feel, the focus, you know, when you are talking about practical, when you are talking about prescription, the focus here will be more therapeutic. Okay? Because next six, seven months you will be starting uh, prescription, you will be interns. So you should know which remedy for which particular condition you can think of a given remedy. So it, it should be more uh, therapeutic oriented. Okay, good. See, myasm, what do you mean by myasm? We'll take one by one and then we'll start a remedy. So a homeopathic materia medica in final year should be thought keeping the miasm in the background. Good. Okay. So how do you think the knowledge of miasm is going to help in better understanding of organa? Hmm? What is it? Okay, prognosis good. Teaching material. How is knowledge of organa going to help you? Which medicines are antisodic? Okay, so I mean there are some remedies which are predominantly sorry, predominantly psychotic and predominantly sympathetic. Okay, so we'll explore this area. Good. Anything else? In one single remedy there will be stages of sorry. Okay, so for example, good. Many polycrest remedies might have a sorry phase, a psychotic phase and a syphilitic phase. We'll look at it. Good. Anything else? You know the progression of the disease. Okay, to, I mean, it's a beautiful contribution to know the progression. Now, what do you mean to know the progression? In cases of cases, the progression of the uh, disease would be very faster. Okay. So, uh, a syphilitic disease, progress might be fast. A psychotic disease, the progress might be slow. Good. We'll, we'll come to it. The okay. helps us to make the patient understand about how much time the patient will require to get into cure. Okay, fine. Knowledge of myasm might also give you a clue how much time will be taking in, in curing a particular case. Good. Yeah, good. For the final year, it's a good uh, you know, interaction. Good, beautiful. And then comparison. How one remedy is different from the other? Okay, how one remedy is different from another remedy. Now, why should we focus on comparison? is learning material medica through rubrics. Learning material medica through rubrics. Or through repertory. Learning material medica through repertory. We will explore all these things. I mean we have few classes planned in future. You know, we will explore all these things. Okay? So what I was trying to focus here is <coughs> we are looking at uh, the comparative part. See, when you repertories tomorrow in your clinic, uh, the repertorial results will be many. Huh? Very rarely we land up with a single remedy. Huh? So what is very important is the knowledge of materia medica helps you helps you differentiate one remedy from another remedy. So comparison, which stage? What? We will take an example. So comparison for a final year student is very very important. Okay. And pathogenesis, I should have talking of. Pathogenesis, as you all know, is is what is pathogenesis? Okay, so we have something called as sphere of action and then we have something called as pathogenesis. What is sphere of action? Where the remedy acts. Good, very good. All of you are right. And what is pathogenesis? Acting on that organ. What is it doing? So that is pathogenesis. Very important. And we, I mean, uh, you are talking about integration. Must be, I don't know, Chinmay was talking about this. Integration or a word came up. Now what do you mean by integration? What is it that we need to integrate in a final year material medica? All the subjects which we have studied so far. Okay. And along with that, uh, repertorization. Okay, fine. All the subjects, your friend uh, makes it very simple. All the subjects, and many of you will be worried. All subject means which all subjects? Okay. Many. So it's a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, uh, journey. If you integrate the knowledge of anat, physiology, forensic or toxicology, pathology, OBG, I mean any other subjects, surgery, medicine, organ, and of course repertory, and of course psychology. You know, this is uh, what we call it as integration. So you will be using the knowledge of all these subjects in 
material so that material becomes interesting. Now, when material sometimes looks complicated is because we are trying to integrate so many things. Hmm? And material also becomes fun because we are integrating so many things. Okay? You will have a clear and easy understanding if you integrate. If you integrate. We will do that and we will come back to the relationship part. Yes, very important. And you know, if time permits, we'll try to take up some cases. How and when relationship becomes important. And our ultimate aim of learning material medica, you know, your immediate aim might be exam. to pass exams. But I'm talking about the ultimatum. I'm talking about the uh, you know future, next seven years and beyond that. The the ultimate thing is you should be capable of prescribing the right remedy. That is our ultimatum. Okay? So, we keep all these things in mind and then we start a remedy. We start a remedy. Okay? And I was also trying to tell you about therapeutics. Now, what is therapeutics? Therapeutics are, you know... Yes. So, for example, typhoid. Okay? What homeopathic remedies? Yeah. Okay, so see, naming is the first part and then the second important part is when Baptisha, when Restaurants, when Arnica. Okay. So we have a method of understanding Materia Medica through therapeutics. Through therapeutics. Okay. So we'll try to explore these areas in today's class and uh, I know PPD, PPT would have been fun, but but we'll manage. So today I'm going to discuss a very simple remedy. Simple remedy which has action on blood. Okay. So when you are talking of a remedy acting on blood, as a fellow student, what are what are the remedies that come to your mind? in the further classes, in the further uh, 
you know, uh, information that I am going to give you. So what is the basic information I gave you about erigeron is, it is a remedy acting on the blood and it, it belongs to a plant and it was approved by Dr. Bird and the entire plant, entire plant is used in homeopathic preparation. Clear? Okay. Now, next very important thing will be the scale of action and the pathogenesis. Pathogenesis. Okay. See, this is a remedy which mainly affects the cardiac plexus. Okay? Fine? I mean, it was beautifully uh, there in the PPT, but anyway, cardiac plexus and this cardiac plexus will, will act on the muscular coat of the blood vessels or the capillaries. So, <coughs> the uh, remedy erigera acts on the cardiac plexus and it affects the muscular coat of the capillaries causing constriction, which in turn gives rise to bleeding. Hope uh, this mechanism is clear. Hmm? Through cardiac plexus, it affects the muscular wall of the capillaries causes constriction followed by hemorrhage. So this is the first point. Okay. Now the second important thing is, this is a remedy apart from blood, you also see this acting on the female genitalia. Hmm? Female genitalia, the kidneys, the bladder hmm? and the mucous membrane of the GI. Please remember all this mucous membrane of because now why sphere of action also becomes important is the class, you know the further class or the remaining part of the class will be focusing on this particular area. Hmm? Its action on blood, its action on the female, its action on the GI and its action on the kidneys, kidneys and the bladder. So majority of your final year remedies are short acting remedies. Majority of your spinal remedies are partially approved remedies. So you will not have information from head to toe in majority of the remedies. Okay. At least erigeron is a remedy, a small remedy which has uh, a very limited uh, area that it will be acting. Okay. Clear? So whenever I use the word erigeron, what comes to your mind? <coughs> So what you see is the calcium 
either there is a deficiency in intake of calcium or even if you are giving external calcium, that calcium is not absorbed and tooth is not getting formed. Delayed dentition. Calcare was. Okay? Delayed dentition. You have children, uh, you know, uh, being brought to the clinic. Sir, my son is one year, four months. Hardly any tooth coming out. I don't see any tooth coming out. Okay? You have many remedies. One remedy you can think of is calcarea floss. Now, how do you differentiate calcarea floss from chamomilla? Hmm? What is the simple difference is, chamomilla will be irritated. Chamo chamomilla is crying, cranky, irritable, but calcarea floss is not irritable. Calcarea floss is not cranky. I am giving you the simple and basic difference in clinic. That was our focus. Tomorrow you have a child who is smiling, laughing, and playing with you, he is not getting irritated, cranky, delayed dentition, calcare loss. Or you have a child, tooth is coming and child is cranky, crying, uh, you have that you know, captiousness, goes to mother for five minutes then goes to the aunt, whatever. <coughs> that is more of uh, chamomile. <coughs> One of your friends was talking about creosote. When you think of creosote in... So what is that? As soon as the... See, these are all the things where only homeopathy can help. Mind you. As soon as tooth appears, it turns blood. And creosote, you all know, is a highly syphilitic remedy. A remedy acting on bones, a remedy acting on, uh, you know, skin ulcers, etc. But what you have to remember is, the moment the tooth appears, which you know should be white, pearly white, in creosote child, within no time it turns black. Hmm? Within no time. That is the, somebody has talked about myasms. That is how the syphilitic myasm is predominant in this particular child. Okay? Chamomila, Sina, Silesia, Magnesium Foss, hmm? Yethusa, lot of families. Now the question is, when erigeron? The question is, when erigeron during dentition? Hmm? So there is a symptom there is a situation mentioned in our material medica and what is that situation is dysuria. Dysuria during dentition. What do you understand by this? Painful. The urination is painful. Okay, urination is painful. So dysuria during, uh, during dentition. Only remedy in our material medica is erigeron. Please keep this in mind. No other remedies have dysuria during dentition. Erigeron is a single remedy. It becomes very easy for you. Child has uh, painful urination and you see, uh, you know, tooth is coming up. The only remedy is erigeron. Okay. Now we look at uh, the uh, very important part. What is given or what comes up in your exams? Sana ishtoku kavarata. Akada bardra kavarata. But we have a desk here, okay, anyway. I'll clear and again uh, we'll use this. So what I was trying to tell you is, we'll be focusing mainly on uh, bleeding. Hmm? Erigana is a hemorrhagic remedy. Erigana is a hemorrhagic remedy. Erigana is a Erigeron is a... Okay. So, is a hemorrhagic remedy. Hmm? So, we will try to focus mainly on the hemorrhages. Hmm? So, hemorrhage from where? Okay. See, in the PPT I had, uh, I had all images beautifully taken for you, but no problem. God wanted us to take class like this, we'll take immersions. So we have uh, bleeding coming from nose and we have bleeding coming from... Uh, my knowledge of anatomy is a uh, question. Hope it looks like someone. Okay. And we have... Uh, 
and vomiting of blood, see the beauty of this symptom, vomiting of blood, aggravation, motion. You are getting the symptom? Get symptom, no? Vomiting of blood, aggravation, motion. Again, only remedy mentioned in our books is erigera. Tomorrow you are lucky, you have a patient and this patient is vomiting and vomiting is more when he is moving or when she is moving, the remedy is erigera. So there is vomiting, okay, there is uh, bleeding or vomiting of blood because of ulcers of the stomach, okay, burning pain, all those things in stomach. In the GI, lower down, where else you can see bleeding? Hemorrhoids. Very good, hemorrhoids. Bleeding hemorrhoids. Good, does it? Bleeding hemorrhoids. Fissures. okay. So here, here, see, fissures can also bring in bleeding, but here, the bleeding is mainly from hemorrhoids. Hmm? Bleeding hemorrhoids, okay? Bleeding hemorrhoids associated with urinary complaints. Understand the association. What is the association? Urea. Rectal complaints associated with dysuria. Sir, I have pain. I have bleeding. And with bleeding, I also have burning urination. Burning urination. Single remedy is irrigera. Single remedy is irrigera. So there are a lot of single things coming up in irrigera. Please make a list of it. It can be very useful in your practice tomorrow. Hmm? So hemorrhoids, as if the anus is getting torn, very hard, lumpy stools, bleeding hemorrhoids, and they feel as if anus, anus is getting torn. Torn, okay? And uh, hemorrhoids associated with this is not urinary complaints. This is urea. Specifically painful urination. Painful urination. So this is related to J. Hmm? Okay. Now a beautiful question for you which comes up is from the uterus. From the uterus. Where all can, can you see bleeding? So we will just take it up this side here. There are a lot of headings. I am trying to create a PPT here on the board. You know what I have put it in my uh, presentation, I am trying to bring it on the blackboard. So where do you see? Uh, one second. No. Where is this knowledge coming from? You are getting my point? Perfect idea. So as a material teacher, I am trying to use the knowledge of all subjects so that my topic becomes appealing and interesting to your students. Okay. So bleeding, bleeding can happen because of endometriosis possible, because of fibroid, deuteris, ectopic pregnancies, etc. etc. But, but one very important thing for you here is menses itself. Okay? Simple. R, 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 where else you can see bleeding here is commented. Postpartum memories. R, 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 one, somebody has been shouting. Abortions. R, where else can you see bleeding? Pregnancy. Pregnancy, pregnancy. pregnancy. Okay? See, you gave me a lot of uh, answers. Now you need to understand, in Erigara, there will not be bleeding because of uh, fibroid. Hmm? Even if there is bleeding because of fibroid, Erigara is not the deep acting remedy that it can cure fibroid. Arthakta, yeah. Max, what it can do is? Stop. It can stop or it can reduce bleeding. Hope oh, you are getting an idea. Why not fibroid? Why not fibroid? Yeah, must be irregular is not that deep enough to produce fiber, so naturally it is not capable of curing fiber. And clinically we have no cases from the literature where uh, the stalwarts have spoken of irregular being given for uh, fibers and fibers have disappeared. Those records we don't have. Okay. So what you want, uh, what you need to understand is bleeding which comes after abortion. Or abortion itself in irrigara, irrigara can happen from weakness of the uterus. I will explain this. Now can somebody quickly correlate abortion and uh, weak uterine muscles? Atoni. Beautiful. Good word. Atoni. There is weakness of the uterine muscles. So the uterus is 
not able to retain the fetus. Correct? So, it is aborted. Hmm? Uh, better remedy? Sabaina. Huh? Okay, I mean, atom of weakness. From uterine atomy. Helonius. Helonius. Helonius and boys can read a rare remedy, alitrotus. Alitrotus. Okay. Fractionus Americana, Alitrotus, Helonius, these are few rare remedies that you can uh, go back home and read. Abortions which comes from exertion. See the, see the correlation. You getting my point? See, if you just read abortion from exertion, do you think it will touch? It will uh, penetrate? Now what is that I am giving you before uh, that? What, what is the state of uh, lady? Irregular ladies, she has got weak muscles. There is uterine atomy. So, because of the uterine atomy, the uterine muscles are all weak. And even, you know, movement can bring in abortion. This is how we are justifying material medical. Okay? Done? And one more remedy you need to remember, slightest exertion. You know, for example, few steps she is putting or normal job she is doing normal, nothing uh, big that can bring in abortion hmm? sir, slightest I went one floor, came down I aborted not only now sir, even previous last two, three, two to three times it has happened and doctor has told it's a precious pregnancy you can't uh, step out better that? so slightest exertion bringing on abortion the only remedy mentioned in your material medica is helonius. I am hmm? giving an example, slightest exertion, small exertion, bringing in abortion is helonius. All fine? All clear? So, to bring you back to the track, we are talking of uh, bleeding in uh, helonius. And bleeding in helonius can happen from any orifice. And the orifices we saw here is Nose, bleeding gums, vomiting of blood and the other end through the rectum, through the anal opening you have uh, uh, bleeding in form of hemorrhoids and we focus on a very important area and this area is female. After abortions there can be bleeding hmm? or there can be abortions which comes from uh, weak muscles and abortions aggravation or abortion happening from exertion. Menses itself in hello, I mean in uh, irrigara. Oh, I mean any inputs? Very good. There can be profuse menses. There can be profuse menses. Menses in this, uh, I mean bleeding generally, I wanted to keep it in the end. The character of bleeding in irrigara is bright red. The character of bleeding in erigeron is gushing. Do you understand gushing? Yes. yes. It comes with a force. Gushes. Hmm? Better remedy? Gushing menses. Belladonna. Belladonna. Coculus. Some 17 remedies are there. Okay? Go back home and read. But the bleeding, the menstrual flow in hello, I mean in erigeron is bright red. And it is gushing, 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 gushing. Okay. And we are talking of uh, menorrhagia, metorrhagia. Okay. Bleeding after abortions or postpartum hemorrhage. Hmm? Postpartum hemorrhage. The tonicity is lost, and you are bleeding. And bleeding, which is again uh, bright red, and bleeding which gushes. It comes, it goes. Please remember, in comparison, this point is very valid. Hemorrhage comes and hemorrhage goes. Okay, bleeding comes and goes. Postpartum hemorrhage. Can you also link something here, very important, from your gynec knowledge? Sorry, from your obstetrical knowledge? Very good, beautiful was that. Lokia. Good. Lokia. No, no place, but anyway. Lokia. Lokia. Hmm? Lokia, again. Aggravation, slightest exertion. What is Lokia? Discharge after delivery. After delivery. Okay, so your pretty Lokia, Lokia, aggravation.
exertion after exertion after exertion yes after exertion pregnancy pregnancy any quick input huh? we spoke of exercises good good thought okay certain abortions fine exertion bringing on abortion and there is this blood which is created good possible books don't mention but you can take it no no yeah okay more than that. see what you can have in uh, irregular is bleeding during pregnancy during six months during six months the lady can have bleeding Hmm? Okay. The only other remedy mentioned in a material medica is cannabis indica. I am not talking about abortion. I am talking about bleeding per vagina during pregnancy. Baby is intact. Fetus is intact. Okay, but there can be bleeding during during pregnancy. And if the bleeding is bleated, and if the bleeding is gushing, the only remedy that should come to your mind is irrigation. That's it. Hmm? Okay. So see, bleeding is a famous question that can come up in your exams for a final year student. Please remember all these things: bleeding, gushing, bright red. Where and how you have bleeding is also very important. One last area we have to talk here is here is what is that like? I'll clear this. All fine. Yes. Any quick uh, revision because we don't have PPT to get back. And I we can't write everything once it is clear. This is the biggest disadvantage of uh, blackboard teaching. Hmm? Okay. So, prima question: bleeding, bleeding can be from nose in form of epistaxis. Epistaxis can be during fever, or epistaxis can be during the entire pregnancy. Profuse epistaxis, bleeding coming from uh, stomach. From ulcers, vomiting of blood from ulcers, vomiting aggravation, motion. Okay, and then we saw hemorrhage. As the penis is getting torn. Hmm. Okay, and <coughs> hemorrhage associated with dysuria, and even the metallurgia, metallurgia, all associated with dysuria. Hmm. Even the female complaints, meaning the bleeding. Associated with dysuria, very important. Irritation of bladder or irritation of the rectum. Very few remedies they have this combination, and this is one remedy. This is one remedy. Okay. And uh, the last area we are trying to focus is uh, the kidneys. A real test for my <laughs> Okay, so you have kidneys done. It can affect the kidneys, and more important, what you see is its affection for the bladder. bladder. Because you saw a lot of complaints coming from bladder, dysuria, huh? or there can be hematuria, or there can be hematuria, progressive hematuria, meaning continuous bleeding. Okay, bright red gushing, hematuria, hmm? dysuria, dysuria during labor. Please understand the statement. What is the statement? Dysuria, dysuria during labor. Hmm? What do you mean by this? Painful micturition during labor. Right? So unfortunately, how many of the women or the present generation of normal delivery is again a question. I am just trying to tell you the utility of irrigation. Single remedy given in your material medical. Uh, dysuria during labor. Dysuria during menses. Sir, I don't have issues with my dysmenorrhea. I have issues with my painful urination. Please treat this. And every month during menses, I am getting painful urination. Single remedy, irrigation. Yeah, single remedy is irrigation. Hmm? So painful uh, urination during labor, <coughs> painful urination during uh, menses. Men
senses and painful urination during dentition. Don't worry. That's what we started with. When we add new new things, we try to forget the old thing. During dentition, they will have difficulty in urination. Hmm? Difficulty in urination. Done? Okay? Clear? Huh? So, uh, this is where irrigation gets indicated. Last part is, uh, it's a remedy belonging to composite. So, what is special in composite? Injuries. So, ecchymosis. What is ecchymosis? Accumulation of blood in the subcutaneous tissue. Okay. Ecchymosis after a blow or after an injury. What other remedies we generally think of? We think of blood. We think of arnica. Black eye. Blood. Black eye after an injury. Blood. Black eye after an injury is arnica. Ecchymosis. You know, when you have all that uh, blood getting accumulated, okay, after an injury, the remedy is uh, irrigator. The remedy is irrigator. Aggravation lying on the left hand side, aggravation, rainy season. These are all the modalities of irrigator. Hmm? Okay? Done? Now, uh, <coughs> quickly we look at the comparison. What remedies you want to compare? See, comparison is fun when you answer. Sepia, telepsia. Okay, telepsi, bursa, you also sepia. I mean, see, phosphorus and all are common remedies you can take out. I'll tell you a few uncommon remedies. For example, you have ustilago. Ustilago. Okay. Ustilago again has uh, braided bleeding. Okay? Done? And ustilago will have bleeding on examination. Remember? What is that uh, important condition from your venous knowledge? On digital examination, if there is bleeding, what condition comes to your mind? CA cervix. Good. CA cervix. So, if you still have minus CA, on digital examination, there will be bleeding. Braided bleeding. It's a fungus. I had beautiful images. Uh, unfortunately, power. No issues. You still have. And one more remedy I wanted to talk to you here is Senecio. Senecio aureus. Again a rare remedy, but I want you to, a final year student to know about this, Senecio aureus. Fine. Again a remedy which will have dysuria, menstrual irregularities, back pain and all. But, but the flow will not be so much like erigera. The flow will not be so much like erigera. There's one more remedy, I don't know if I can get the pronunciation right. I was very confident about the PPT, so I did not uh, register that name, Michele. Uh, if you permit, one second, let me have a look. So there's a rare remedy. Yeah, Michela Ripens. M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-A R-E-P-E-N-S Repens Michela Repens So here again you have braided hemorrhages Okay But what did I tell you when I told you about bleeding in Erigara? Brushing It comes and it goes In Michela the bleeding continues See this is where you know, in your practice tomorrow, you will have this challenge. Brighter huh? memory is, bleeding is continuous. And if you give very good on, it will not work. Don't blame homeopathy, don't blame very good on. Don't blame the stalwarts of homeopathy. Right? It is our mistake. So everything, every minute thing in your case taking becomes important. If the flow is continuous, brighter, then it is Michela. If it is gushing, stopping, then it is illegal. Okay? You also have uh, another, uh, uh, you know, what is it? Fungi. Which are other fungi? You can think of. Sickle, good. Sickle. Sickle will have more of dark. More of dark and more of uh, slow hemorrhages. Bovista. Bovista. Bovista will have more of intermenstrual bleeding. 
breathing has happened three days. Menses has stopped. Fourteen day, fifteen day again, uh, there is intermenstrual bleeding. Bleeding aggravation night. Intermenstrual bleeding. Bovista. Bovista. Okay. And uh, bladder dysuria. Child cries while passing urine. I'll come to Aishwarya's uh, remedy. Now before that, child cries while passing urine. Like a pudding. Like good. Sarsa Pirla, beautiful. One more simple remedy. When you are told, like, I mean, when you are told Laiko, when you are told, uh, what is it, one more Sarsa Pirla, when you are told uh, Cather is one more remedy. One more remedy. Child cries while passing urine. Child remembers, you know, of the agony that he has gone through in the previous episode and before he gets that urge now he starts uh, shouting and crying because he knows if I pass urine now I know the kind of pain I have gone through and that is borax 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 hot urine hot urine painful urine inflammation of the urinary tract and child cries during urination Perhaps. In lycopodium, what you have is you have a small gravel, small stone, sand, same opposite to Sarsa Perilla. Okay. Cantharis, you know, will have more of blood. UTS. UTS. Now coming to Aishwarya's answer, stephysagria. When stephysagria in UTS? When stephysagria? Good, good. Yeah, honeymoon cystitis. Hmm? Honeymoon cystitis. Okay, I have, uh, I have been fortunate to, to treat two or three patients of mine, you know, who have had uh, this particular uh, complaint. Honeymoon cystitis. Honeymoon cystitis. Okay. So this is about irregular. Okay. Any quick questions? Boys, bad, all clear? See, uh, why are you taking so much of pain? To make you understand, the remedy is the more you get convinced and the more you start loving homeopathy, the more passionate you become about uh, homeopathy in future. Okay? So it's very important. You have that passion. You have that fire. Okay? So this is all about Erigala. And one last uh, area that we missed to touch here is the clinical utility of uh, Erigala. Tomorrow, theory to you realize this is what you are going to write. Tomorrow, in practice, what are those conditions where you will think of erigara? Yes. You can think of uh, erigara in uh, UTI, epistaxis, postpartum hemorrhage, menorrhagia, metorrhagia, abortions, ulcers. So this is what a list you need to make and keep it, so that it will be useful. You know, I am giving you a written note, one of you can make a, take a pick and give it back. So everything is there in the note. Hmm? Now before we close... Sir, which potency acts first? See, I mean, to be honest, I am never used to regard. Okay. But all these uh, small remedies generally are given in lower potencies. We either give it in 30 or we give it in 200, not beyond that. Because mind also is not so much explored, many pullings are not done to that extent where the mind symptoms are also elicited. Hmm? Okay. So preferably 30 and ideally they repeat in these conditions when it is uh, pathological, so much of bleeding happening, generally 30, 3 times. Okay. 33 times. I will talk to you about a beautiful case after this. But before I take up the case, any uh, any questions? All clear in the Udugu. Fine. The only idea is please uh, understand, fall in love with the subject and uh, start studying. Take it uh, as a serious thing. That's very, very important. Hmm? Okay? Chala, thank you. Sir. Thanks.